The major benefits of fish oils in helping to prevent cardiovascular disease and heart attacks are now widely accepted, but a new scientific review of omega-3 fatty acids and health, commissioned by the Health Supplement Information Service, shows that the advantages are even more far-reaching. The new scientific review shows that omega-3 fatty acids found in fish oils can improve immune function and also help people alleviate inflammatory conditions such as eczema and also rheumatoid arthritis. But two few people are getting the optimal level of these essential nutrients. Well, leading independent dietitian Dr. Carrie Ruxton analysed the current evidence surrounding omega-3 sources, intakes, recommendations and their impact upon health and is the lead author of this new research paper. Well, there are significant and powerful benefits to omega-3s and that's what the evidence is showing, not just for heart health, which we all know about, but for immune function and cognitive function, the way our brains work as well. Um, for immune function, it helps unborn children if, if omega-3s are taken throughout pregnancy and also for cognitive function, it not, not only helps children, but people in later life as well. Heart disease is one of the major causes of premature morbidity and mortality at the, at the moment. There's very good evidence that an, an important essential nutrient that's not in our diet, that's not produced by the body, is a omega-3 fatty acid, which is a form of polyunsaturated acid. Um, a lot of work looking at the diet of Inuit demonstrated that one of the reasons why they have such low incidence of heart disease is their very high intake of fatty fish oils. We now know that what these agents do is protect cell membranes, they control blood pressure, and they help to reduce the buildup of plaque in blood vessels. And uh, a number of large-scale studies have shown that consuming fatty fish oils or taking supplements for people that don't like it can reduce the incidence dramatically by over 30%. As a nation, we're, we're not consuming enough. There's good evidence that here you've got something that's effective, it's simple, it's relatively cheap, and um, most people are not taking any, anywhere near the rec recommended amount. The government has, has clear guidance on this and suggests that we should be having fatty fish oils at least twice a week. Um, and this could be ideally through, through our diet. So fishes such as salmon, um, herring, mackerel are ideal and perfect forms, um, or one can take supplements. The downside to all of this is, is that much of our fish at the moment comes from farm sources and there are concerns about toxicities, things like mercury and, and other such agents that one needs to be cautious about. And so the source is important in, in what we consume. So what is the answer? Well, Emma Young was told by her doctor that she had to increase her omega-3 intake and despite initial worries, she managed to find a way. My mum tells me I don't get enough omega-3 in my diet, which makes me a bit worried because my husband and I have decided to try for a baby. Now, I know that omega-3 is really good for pregnant women and very good for the growth of a healthy child, but I don't like fish. I mean, I can't stand it. So I went to the doctor and um, just got some general advice about being pregnant and what diet I should have. I told him about that I don't like fish. But he advised me that I could take omega-3 fish supplements and they have the same benefits as eating fish. Ideally, most people should be eating oily fish every week, but we know that's not the case. Two-thirds of people never eat oily fish, and yet they're missing out on the health benefits from omega-3s. So I think this is where a supplement has a very important role to play. Omega-3 supplements deliver um, a, a defined dose every single day, and I think they're really important for people who can't or won't eat fish. So supplements seem to be a commendable alternative to oily fish, but how much omega-3 do you actually need in your diet? Well, Dr. Ruxton says that this needs to be made more clear. Current recommendations are for 450 milligrams of omega-3s every day, but that's a little bit confusing because a lot of the research has used levels much higher than that. And also the recommendations are couched in terms of fish consumption. So of course, if you don't eat fish, you're thinking, what do I do? So I think they could do with clarification to really bring in the role of supplements as an alternative. Sadly, it would seem that the health benefits of omega-3 fatty acids are being missed by most Britons. The hope is that this new study will kickstart people into changing their habits.